Okay, so Waveshare have sent me this very cool e-ink display, which I've attached my Raspberry Pi Zero 2W to the back of, and it generates AI images on its own, offline. It is connected to my Wi-Fi at the moment, because I'm controlling it with my Raspberry Pi 5, so you can see on this screen. But also, it's running Raspberry Pi OS in the background. I've got HTOP running, because I was monitoring how much the CPU was being used while it was generating the image. But as soon as it finishes generating the image, then it goes into a really low power mode and it actually can run off a battery. We'll have a bit more of a look at the hardware in a minute. So the software it's using is Paper Pi AI from this GitHub. A standalone Raspberry Pi Zero 2W powered ink picture frame running stable diffusion generating an infinite array of pictures. So the default setup generates random flower pictures with random styles. Once set up, the picture frame is fully self-sufficient, able to generate unique images with no internet access until the end of time. Each image takes about 30 minutes to generate and about 30 seconds to refresh to the screen. And you can change the list of images and styles because it's AI. And it's quite funny that it takes half an hour because before it showed anything on the display, I didn't know the display was working. So it takes half an hour with no indication on the display at all that it's gonna work, but obviously now, it's generated that image. It doesn't take any power to show that image once it's generated. So I did have to wait half an hour to see if my soldering skills would work and my soldering skills are awful. So this is the information on the Waveshare page. So a 7.3 inch E6 full color E paper, solid wood photo frame, 800 by 480 resolution, comes with a battery, which I'll show in a minute. And there's some nice images of the display itself and the back which has got its own stand. That's a cool image. I was thinking it'd be quite, because I'm well into bicycles, I would like it to create random bike images. So 170 degree viewing angle, E6 full color, real time clock chip, no blue light emitted from it. So there's a version with or without the board. I got mine without the board. I've got two Raspberry Pi Zero 2Ws. One of them doesn't work anymore and that's the one that already had the GPIO pins on it. The other one I needed to solder them on. So it's able to charge the battery and provide power at the same time from external power supply, automatically switch over to battery output if external power is unavailable. I don't know what happens if I, I think if I unplug it, the display stays on. We'll soon find out. So because I've only just set it up, this, this is how I'd finished with it. And you can see the 02W is on the back of the board. I've got the USB-C cable going in, powering it. If I unplug this monitor, which is, so as you can see, running Raspberry Pi OS, so that was just an HDMI out directly from the 02W. So now I can unplug this cable, because I was using mouse and keyboard with it before I was remote accessing it. So this is just the Pi on the back of the frame. So what happens if I unplug it? Well, I guess I ought to shut down Raspberry Pi OS first. So if I do sudo shut down dash h now. Okay, so that's powering off the Pi. We still have a display. I can't tell if it's off or not, I guess. The light on the Pi, that's still flashing green. Yeah, it's gone off now. The display's still on. So if I unplug this, what happens? Yeah, so the display, I thought it did, but I, I doubted myself when I was reading about the battery. So as you can see, nothing's plugged in, but it can display this picture. So here's the back of it, and basically it's just like a normal picture frame that you would put photos into. You can bend these tabs up, and then this slots out. And you can change the orientation between portrait and landscape, and you can see the buttons that come through. So we've got a power button here, USB-C is what provides power from the mains, and then we've got our battery output here as well. And Let's go in close to show you how badly soldered it is. Uh, so I have no soldering skills. I've got a really old soldering arm, which is a rubbish one. And if we have a look, so my Pi Zero on the right hand side is uh, my original that came soldered when I bought it new. But this is the one I did today. I'm surprised it actually works because some of the bits really don't look very well finished at all. But this Pi Zero works for some reason 
this has just stopped working for me. I've used it a lot in several videos. I used to have it connected to this breakout board and I'm not sure if pulling it apart once, maybe I've been a bit rough with it because I have uh, very often had to unplug it and plug it in. Um, so I think I may have caused it. But this is the one I've always used for Motion iOS, which is like a security camera. So this detaches. Now I've actually got, <laughs> oh dear, I hate doing this. Especially with my soldering skills. Let's go ultra safe. So I've got another sort of breakout on here. So this is like a male to female one, which makes it come out more proud but that's just because the GPIO pins I soldered on weren't perfectly straight, so they didn't, they were a bit tight, so I thought if I put it on that, that then goes in really nice and easily. Now, if we spin this around without the zero on there, you can see that the display is still showing because obviously it's generated it and it's not using any power. I do like that about e-ink displays, they are very cool. So the battery that comes with it is this one. Actually, this might be quite handy. Yeah, 3.7 volt, and the reason I say that is because one of these batteries is faulty. Now these batteries came with this Pi Boy, which is a Raspberry Pi 4 games console handheld. So it was battery operated, but at the moment I'm using it with a power bank, and it says that it will last for 19 and a half hours, uh, and you can see that all that's working. But before, what would happen if I tapped it, it actually would just switch itself off. And having removed both the batteries from this, I know that one of the batteries is the problem because it hasn't switched itself off at all since I've tried that. And that was while I was waiting for the image to generate, I thought I'd take this apart and have a look at it. So let's put all this back together, but let's put the battery in this time. So the battery goes in here. Now it does have a little adhesive bit, but I'm not gonna do that because I've got a test that I wanna use with that little console. We have another hanger here, a spare one. Got some standoffs and screws. So obviously you're supposed to screw this in place. I can't because I've used those extended GPIO pins. I've got a little debug board here, looks like. So I guess this is, if you, need access to it but there isn't a network there, then you can control it directly. But I'm gonna use mine over Wi-Fi. Got real-time clock. Got this little plastic cover to go over the back of the Pi just to protect it. I'm not sure what I need this for, I haven't needed it yet. I guess that's maybe to flip these bits up and down. So let's pop this back on. Oh, and I can see the Pi. Oh. Uh, it started booting up, I can see a green light in there. So the battery has some power in it already. So I've plugged it in with my power bank now. And if I wanna remotely access it from my Pi 5 or any other computer on the network, SSH Pi at 192.168.1.99. Pop the password in. And we're in. So I can do sudo at install fast fetch. Okay, maybe it'll have to be near fetch because it's an older version. Not sure if it works with Debian Trixie. Yeah, that's going to install. So now if I do near fetch, we can see it's my Raspberry Pi 02W. And if we do htop, we can see how much resources it's using. So as you can see, very little at the moment. I'm not sure what it's quite doing. I suppose it's just been installing, that's all it's been doing. But if we go back to the terminal, so if I do control C, so all the instructions are here on the wiki to be able to install it. So to run it, I use this. So CD into paper pi AI, and then run this. Create images using random instructions in the default configuration, which at the moment is flowers. So let's let it do another one of those. So if I copy that and pop that in here and hit enter and nothing will happen for half an hour because it's got to generate it, but then it should replace the image that's already on there. So we'll come back in half an hour.
So we have a look at what it's been doing. So starting image generation, output path, so this shows us where the image is going to turn up, token bokeh, diffusion. So you obviously wouldn't see this, this would happen behind the scenes. So the display is just showing that image until it replaces it with another one. And it appears to be very configurable. So from the GitHub. And weirdly, mine generate upside down. So there probably is a way of generating it to be 180 degrees from what they are because if I stand it up on the stand, the image is upside down. That's obviously fine if I hang it on the wall. Uh, there's instructions for portrait on here. And we're looking for the prompt directory to be able to change the prompts. And here's a list of some of the prompts. Single stem rose, bokeh of tulips, single bluebell stem, as digital pixel art, as an engraving, using flat illustration, as folk art. Okay, so it's the next day. And as you can see, it's updated the picture. I'm going to plug in a lap dock to be able to access this. Because I found a cool thing yesterday. So if I go into this folder, 7-in-1, and C, watch the display. So it launches this demo, and it's got some really good quality images on there. You can see it's switching. And I just like the effect on it. It seems to be really bright, even though the display has no illumination itself. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.